I'm one of the founding members of the Bay Area Breast Cancer and the Environment Research Center. It's one of four national centers that are dedicated to studying the environmental causes of, of breast cancer. We've recently, uh, in collaboration with Zero Breast Cancer, uh, put together a video called Breast Biologues, uh, which explains the process of breast development as well as uh, the potential effects of environmental agents like ionizing radiation uh, on breast development. And we were very fortunate to uh, get Peter Coyote to, uh, to be our voiceover. While research has advanced our knowledge of breast cancer, more research is still needed to uncover how cancer corrupts normal development processes and how exposure to environmental toxins affects breast cancer risk. At this time, there's only one proven environmental agent that causes breast cancer, and that's ionizing radiation. Uh, but what we're trying to do is to understand exactly how ionizing radiation works uh, in molecular terms, and then we want to go on to these other agents that you're all concerned about that are in the environment and find out how many of them may be uh, affecting either your susceptibility or the progression of breast cancer. In the response to ionizing radiation, what's become very clear is that uh, girls that were exposed during puberty were the ones who went on to get breast cancer, whereas uh, adult women who were exposed uh, to the same amount of radiation didn't have any uh, additional breast cancer. And so this becomes very important in thinking about these other agents. Are there windows of susceptibility where exposure will either set you up to make you more susceptible to breast cancer or make the beginnings of breast cancer progress faster? There are a lot of parallels between normal development and cancer, which haven't been appreciated till recently. Normal development is a very invasive event. You know, we think of cancer as being invasive, but normal is invasive. Cancer cells divide a lot, and so does normal breast during puberty, except it knows when to stop. Though normal breast development and cancer are similar, there are a few important differences. Both involve invasion, cell growth, resistance to cell death, and the formation of new blood vessels. As you witnessed in the videos, however, with cancer, the processes are more disrupted and frenetic. Through my organization, Latinas Contra Cancer, I was provided a disc and a packet on the breast cancer biolog. It makes it very easy to understand how genetics and environment play a role in breast cancer that I was completely unaware of beforehand. Well, I think that working together with the breast cancer advocates has been really educational because uh, we've had to really think about how we present science to the general community. I would love to put that in my, my education program and uh, bring the same light and awareness to others that I felt while I was watching that video. We're very much interested in translating the material for the Farsi speaking community so they can also take advantage of this uh, really great uh, tool. We should all be able to tell, take our science and tell our grandmothers, uh, presuming they don't have PhDs in nuclear physics, uh, what we do in a way that is actually informative. And so this is what we've been learning to do and it's actually been a lot of fun.